Good morning, everyone. I am Darshan Patel, and today we are going to talk about open roaming. So, have you ever wondered how to have a seamless roaming from LTE to Wi Fi from any buildings that you do not only work, but any buildings that you can go ahead and have connectivity? Either you are visiting to hospital your loved ones or you're visiting to your kids in a university or anywhere you're going for a grocery or enjoying a game or an any event or music isn't that great to always have the best wireless network either it's LTE or Wi-Fi or 5G does not matter right that's the goal so that's where we are talking about having a seamless roaming, whether you are going from road to getting to building, it should be connected. Do we know that only 20% of the buildings do not have wireless connectivity that is needed in all parts, out of which 17% do not have a DAS system, only 3% has DAS. So having that great experience from the end user is not possible. And in order to overcome, installing DAS system is costly. It's an enormous cost that is added to provide that services. Is it possible to have the similar or better experience without additional DAS cost added to it? In comparison, even after having wireless LTE connectivity or 5G, what is the user experience? Is it better? And what's the speed? Are they going to be able to provide and have access to every application in a seamless, faster video? And AR and VR are coming up really soon. Will we continue to have the great experience with 5G or LTE? And it's not possible in certain density where in metropolitan city, in a high rise buildings, having that coverage apart from installing a private 5G or DAS system. But what can we do to those remote places or the metropolitan cities? And on the most important thing is how to have Wi Fi engagement. Either you are an event or having a, your favorite game you are watching or in a premises you're going for a grocery or a mall shopping or you're in a hospital or a university you can have that better experience and all those things could be possible with the help of open roaming yes open roaming is the answer to have that seamless secure and private guest onboarding experience how to have that heavier offloading, not only from LTE to Wi-Fi, but after measuring, there are certain SLAs being measured and offload the traffic. So Cisco has developed, standardized and adopted and Wireless Broadband Alliance is managing it. And the top of that, having a better customer acquisition and loyalty experience, simplified and secure enterprise onboarding, not just open SSID, or a guest portal that you have to enter your username, password, your credential, accept user policy, and then you are able to log into it. And in some cases, you have just a PSK being laid out. That is equally, I would say, not the great experience that you are secured with the help of PSK. WPA3 is really promising in that area. So access providers from enterprise, healthcare, retail, hospitality, education, and smart city. All of those places we can have open roaming and will be the great experience. Service providers, web or cloud application that we have it, devices or enterprise or loyalty app. All those could be identity providers. So let's take a quick look that the private 
Seamless, secure, and it is based on .1x based authentication. WPA2 or WPA3 encryption is possible with open roaming. And private, it can be anonymized data that you do not like to share that information, that is possible. What is required? Minimum ROS code version 8.3, 8.5 and 8.10, now it is recommended. DNA spaces with connector. Similar, it goes with 9800 controller. Now it's 17.3 is preferred code version with DNA spaces with connector. And what IDs are available? So service provider, that we have it, AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon, Enterprise, device embedded. So Samsung devices have that embedded open roaming into it. Cloud ID, we have an open roaming application that you can download and you can just have your information continue with Google, your Google ID inform. That's all you need to do from an end user point of view once. So whenever with your premises that supports open roaming, you will be able to connect to it without any additional. Think about that. My mother-in-law does go to hospital trying to connect she is 65 and I haven't seen her going through the settings trying to go ahead trying to select which SSID accepting users and policy even though it's an open SSID because that's that's in particular age and while we take a look into my knees she will always try to find which SSID is available on WLAN trying to access that so that it will be fast, where they can share their experience, right? Whether they are on social media or I want to have a live video and wherever they are. So Wi-Fi provides a great experience irrespective of what age you are looking for. They all like to have, and Wi-Fi is the answer with Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E. So let's take a quick look into what the demo looks like. So as we can see over here, from the configuration point of view, we can have under security and the configuration does lay out at the DNA spaces what we would like to have it, right? But there are certain issues as of right now. And if you take try twice and it doesn't work, go ahead and open up a tech case. And we are in the meantime fixing that configuration. So. Coming back to security AAA, this is where you lay out your DNA spaces connector IP address and its password. After that, you move into policy and try to have that information of open roaming a separate policy created. One thing we need to remember over here that in policy, it is a regular configuration, one which is required after your VLAN and advanced, you need to have a hotspot server as an open roaming and IPv4 information. Also, we need to take a look into what is the hotspot open roaming configuration that you have it. And also make sure that assigned ROI has been selected or not. Going back to WLANs. We will require a separate WLAN called Open Roaming or any other name as possible, but it will require a separate WLAN to be broadcasted. And as we can see, it can be WPA2 or WPA3 encryption. WPA3 is encouraged to have it for more secure for our guest Open Roaming SSID. So WPA2 policy encryption is AES authentication key management dot one x um, that's it that's all you need to do apart from uh, assigning to policy tags and as we can see over here in dashboard the clients are connected and here is my client connected to it open roaming with the username we do not have to click connect go into settings try to select wi-fi or anything 
as long as you have an application and entered your credentials, if a premise is supported, you will automatically connect to it. And on top of that, this is the information that we receive it and have it. But if you go back into DNA spaces, try to gather that information in open roaming application, as we can see, the number of devices, connection, average visit duration, and the details that can be achieved. I hope this information was being useful. If you would like to have more detailed information or any questions regarding open roaming, please don't hesitate to comment or reach out to us. Thank you.